Hey, this is the retarded carny transvestite with Capital Chaos TV. We're hanging out here with Mike from Yob. How's it going, Mike? Doing great, man. Uh, you're, we're down here at Sacramento. You're about to uh, follow Woolhaven here mm -hmm. at the Press Club. That's uh, It's not your first time here in Sac, right? No, no, we've been here. Uh, First time actually was with some of these guys when they were in uh, Ghost Ride, okay. um, and that was 2001, maybe. Oh, okay. 2002. And uh, but you you, you have a uh, you have a history with Will Haven as well, right? Yeah, yeah. We first played with them right on. on um, it's probably right around the same. You know, probably when we played with Ghost Ride it was maybe 2003. First time we played with Will Haven was 2001 or two. Okay. Yeah. And have you gotten an opportunity to go? Uh, 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 across the ocean and play with them or not with them but we've been over uh, across the pond a number of times yeah okay. and uh, uh, now originally you guys are from uh, Eugene Oregon correct yeah. yeah that's right currently you're spread out different uh, areas of that that fine state up there yeah yeah I mean uh, we spent a lot of time in Portland uh, you know we get called the Portland band we have no problem with that we love Portland uh, what is it about uh, Oregon that has uh, kept you there and not had you move to New York or California? Well, I mean, I travel a lot and there's a lot of incredible places. Uh, I've been there for a long time. Uh, it's beautiful, um, green. Uh, it's Pacific Northwest, I think, for people that love it. It's in your bones and, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm not saying I'll be there forever and ever, but um, I've been there most of my life. And uh, uh, doctor assisted suicide is legal up there, or it is, I believe so. And what about uh, marijuana? Do you have some? Uh, is, is legal it as is, well? It is. Yeah, it's it's getting more so. It's definitely decriminalized, and okay. yeah, it's a matter of time before. I mean, it is, it is legal. Okay. You know, I mean, I don't really stay on top of that. You know, I mean, I've lived in Eugene, Oregon for so long. I mean, this is where the Merry Tricksters were hanging out, and okay, right. Ken Kesey, sure. Grateful Dead, marijuana is drugs whatever it's always been there and so it being legal or not legal has not been any kind of impact really whatsoever other than it's great to have it be decriminalized and not have a bunch of taxpayer money being spent on busting people for smoking weed right right it's a big waste of money we've we've really come to find that out yeah uh, now 2000 you said you started in about 96 and you started playing out in 01 is that right we started playing out in 99 oh 99 yeah right. Yeah. So you uh, you waited a little bit. Uh, everybody, you know, when they when they start a band, everybody's so quick to get out and start playing. Uh, a three year well, three year stretch not playing is sort of a, a long time, no? Well, it took me that long to get a lineup okay. because you know it was kind of you know, I had the songs and people come in and come out, and at that time, the style of music was not not very many people cared about it where I was from, and um, and that scene has obviously grown quite a bit since then, but sure. it took me three years to actually get a solid lineup, and then once that happened, we started doing shows. Cool, cool. Good things, uh, you know, I guess take time, right? Yeah, you bet. Well, and at the time, I mean, I met lots of friends who are great musicians, and, you know, I've collaborated in a lot of different bands for, for this band. I just didn't want to compromise on the vision. Sure. I wanted it to be a doom metal band back then that's what I wanted and so I just had to wait until I found people that were willing to be on board with that and uh, in the meantime I played in other bands and played in punk bands played drums in a couple punk okay. bands and so you know I was still active but for Yob I really needed it to be the thing that I was going for creatively and is this something that you envisioned while you were playing hardcore and punk or was this yeah did, okay yeah you sort of uh, wanted to play, and you played in bands, and then yeah, you decided. Well, th that part of me is just as was just as is just as valid, you know. I mean, I did that for so long, and I'm still very moved by it. So, so yeah, your new album is well. Your most recent release is uh, "Clearing the Path to Ascent." Is that correct? Yes. And uh, what's the inspiration for that particular title? Oh, you know, it's um, just. Uh, Things that are hard to put in words and sound cheesy when you say them out loud, but it's uh, just about doing inner work and growing, okay, and inner work. and getting uh, getting rid of habits that don't work, and right. to try to grow and you know be positive. A cleanse of sort, no? Absolutely. Cool. And now Rolling Stone uh, magazine listed your magazine uh, listed your most recent release as the number one metal album of the year. Is that right? Yeah. 
pretty pretty interesting. All right, it's yeah. nice to get some accolades. It's not quite a Grammy, but it, it is <laughs> to a to a certain degree, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's certainly crazier and weirder than anything we'd ever conceived as a possibility. So we we look at it with equal parts surprise and and you know it's definitely an honor. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you're uh, you're about to con about to start about a three week tour with uh, Enslaved and. Uh, Ecstatic vision, ecstatic vision, is that ecstatic correct? vision. Yeah. How su how sweet is that? It's awesome. Yeah, both fantastic bands. I've listened to Enslaved for 20 years easily, over 20 years. Um, listen, in uh, ecstatic vision, I've known their guitar player Doug for a number of years, and it, uh, he's uh, this band. We were able to play with them in New York, and they're quite good. Really excited to be able to play with them. I know Enslaved are very passionate about what they do. Of course, yes. And uh, now, a riff, riff writer, uh, do you uh, learn other people's riffs much? Is there anything you... Uh... A little bit. You know, I've never been, you know, I have friends and my son's a very good guitar player and he spends a lot of time um, learning covers and he's quite good at it. I've never been that guy so much. I mean, I know some covers. But I've always been more concerned about just writing my own stuff. Do you, and ever, do you ever like hear a, a, a cute jingle or a cute riff and go, I want, I want to learn that. And yeah, sure. Of what course. Have you, what have you done recently that uh, caught your ear? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, you know, I've been trying to learn, uh, let me think here. We want to. I want to learn um, "Ugly American" by Poison Idea. Oh, okay, yeah. And yeah. I want to do that as a cover, Ooh, a as a cover in Yob. Wow, and they are a an Oregon band as well. Oh, yeah, one of my all-time favorites. Wow, wow. Yeah. They're, uh, coming yeah. down here in a couple months. Yeah, I'd like to learn that, and um, we've also talked about doing a, an Amoebix song Ooh. also, Where's and we'd like to do a Bad Brain song. Like the covers that we want to do aren't really typical for right. like the doom metal bands. Sure. We want to do like punk covers, but. Right do them in our tuning and not slow them down or anything just do them really true to the song but right. heavy and low tuned give me your little dynamic edge something you know we just love those tunes you know so you, you play what you love you know absolutely and uh recently um uh, a hardcore or a punk band from indiana uh went to uh dimebag daryl's grave and uh desecrated it to some degree what is your feeling on that well, they're they're kids, man. They're kids. They're just dumb kids, and they did something dumb. And people, the amount of unforgiveness that they're getting, um, I think, is a little over the top, to be honest. Extreme, huh? Um, because I mean, show me one person that's railed them that hasn't fucked up in their life. Right. Show me one Absolutely. that hasn't stuck their foot in their mouth, cheated on somebody you know stole from work you know show me one of them glass houses right yeah it's just you know it, it's just it's just a bunch of burning trees that all together create the forest fire you know and I, I just don't see the benefit in it and i do think those kids should be held responsible and they are and they've taken responsibility so i think it's going to blow over eventually but cool. it was you know and you know whatever you know it's things like that happen and you just move on and uh you got the uh, got the tour coming up with Enslaved. What else uh, can we uh, expect from Yob in 2015? Well, we're we're going to do this tour. Uh, we did a um, European tour in 2014, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a Maryland Death Fest in May, cool. and uh, um, Stump Fest in Portland, and that's going to be in late April. Um, and uh, there's going to be a number of good bands playing that as well. And uh, we'll do a handful of other shows. We're probably going to go to um, Australia. Wow. We're looking at that in uh, um, late August. And But aside from that, I think we're, you know, we've been really active. And we try to balance being active with the band with also being connected with our families and, and, and life outside of the band and have some balance there. And so we may not be more active than that this year but you never know you know things come up and all of a sudden all of a sudden we're on tour again so make me an offer i can't refuse right well you know it's weird things happen man i mean you know for us to tour and you know when enslaved we weren't really thinking of touring yet but when enslaved asked we had to do it Hey, this is Chuck Billy from Testament. I'm blowing it up. I'm blowing it up. I'm blowing it up. On Capital Chaos. Capital. 
Chaos. Capital Chaos TV. Motherfucker.